Shalom. <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, giving our praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rachakudash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations unto you, Akim. Upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. <clears throat> this lesson is based upon a dream, <clears throat> or one may title a vision that myself, that I had. Last night, and I prayed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. This is brought forth for the sake of edification and exhortation, <clears throat> but assertively and with faith, I believe this was a vision from the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. <clears throat> now, recently, I've on audio Bible. I have been listening to the book of Daniel and him giving the interpretation of the various dreams. And I also was in the midst of <clears throat> uh, listening to Genesis and the account of Joseph. Uh, the Yesterday, I started listening to Genesis well, I believe it starts at 35, if I'm not mistaken, in this account of Joseph and his life. And we know him and his and Joseph was known for his interpretation of dreams and visions. And last night, I had a vision. And the vision, and in the vision, I'll try to be as detailed as possible and I will bring forth precepts. And of course, brothers with the spirit of discernment, you can, you know, please, you know, elaborate on what you believe, you know, any pointers could signify. But I'll do my best based upon what I've seen through the spirit, what what specific things we're speaking about. All right. <clears throat> in the vision, I was in my house. And on the wall of my house, <clears throat> in my living room, there was, you know how you have trophies. And when I'm not, when I'm not talking about like a, a trophy for a sport, a basketball game, I'm talking about actual trophies of game. Like when you kill game, like animals, like how you have like a, a deer head, stuff like that. All right. Book head, you know, things like of that nature. So there was lions, dead lions hanging all up on the wall, like did like several heads of lions, like like several upper bodies of lions, the different body parts was like severed and they were hanging on the wall as like trophies. All throughout the whole wall. And I looked at it and they were positioned. The lions were positioned and they had their arms doing certain hand gestures. Like to express certain emo emotions, almost like art. But it was like unnatural for a lion to be in that type of format. Now, I'm going to mention... That the lions represent the children of Israel. <clears throat> now, that makes me think of a scripture that I will actually want to get. Now, when I walked up to the wall, let me get the scripture real quick. Now, when I walked up to the wall, I came and saw... One of the more prominent trophies, trophies, which was a male lion, 
and I looked up. My house isn't that the the ceiling of my house isn't that high, but in in the vision, I looked up and it was kind of high, like it was the male lion's head, and it was, and I saw it. Now during the dream, I I was not thinking about the lions being the children of Israel. This is something that I thought about the morning after I woke up. The Lord was spinning; He was basically giving me the understanding of the dream almost immediately after I woke up that morning. But I'm just I'm I'm telling you the dream. When I when I saw the lion, the male lion who was in a trophy setting, I looked and I I said to myself, now this is my house, but I'm thinking like, damn, this Esau did this. Esau killed all these lions. That's why I was telling myself in my head, even though I was in my house. But you know, I looked up. I walked up to the male lion. And I looked up and I said. I said, dang, I said, they really have destroyed. I, I felt sorry for the lion. I said, man, why they have to do him like that? That's what I was saying in my head. I said, goodness, this mighty lion, this beautiful animal, they destroyed you. That's what I said in my head. I was feeling very sorry for that lion, that male lion. All right? Now... I'm going to go to, I'm going to read Genesis, the 49th chapter, okay? <clears throat> and I'm going to go to verse, I'm going to go to verse 8. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. And by the way, this is a prophecy that Jacob gave to his 12 sons, one being this Judah. And Yahweh Shai, by the way, comes from Judah. He comes from the tribe of Judah. The Messiah comes from the tribe of Judah because a lot of this prophecy here in Genesis the forty ninth chapter is speaking of the Messiah. All right, when it go, when it speaks about Judah, but verse eight, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna continue to read. It says, "Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise." Right, because Judah is the the top tribe, the tabernacle, the dynasty of David resides in Judah. All right, and the Messiah who is a part of the tabernacle of David. He resides in Judah, all right, because the house of David, the, the Davidic dynasty, is the head of the tabernacle of David, which is run by David, who is a, a Judite, all right, and will run by Yahweh Shai and David, all right. It says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, right, we're going to, the, the Judites, all right, are going to get the upper hand on the on their enemies in that hour. All right. It says. It says thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Right. Because Judah is going to lead the charge. It's spiritually and physically. So spiritually in his truth it's Judah that has led the charge. All right. All right. For this ministry. In his testimony, all right, starting with um, King Masha, okay, starting with uh, uh, the beloved Abba, all right, these different prominent figures. If I'm not mistaken, High Priest Arya is a Judite. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, all right, but even um, when you talk about Judah, you can also kind of apply that to the southern kingdom in general. Like Apostle Tahar, he's he's of the Southern Kingdom. He's not a Judite, but he's a, he's a Levite, but he's still of the Southern Kingdom. All right, and he's the, he's he's being put as the viceroy, the leader of the nation. All right. It says, <clears throat> it says, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. It says, Judah is a lion's whelp, which is a young lion. Now let me uh actually let me pause this and let me continue back with the dream because it's at the end of the dream it actually applies kind of more towards this next verse. So let me keep going and I'm gonna come back to Genesis the 49th chapter. Alright so I looked at the lion the male lion and he had you know he had his um he had an abundance of uh hair all right, you know, 
And I, I told you what I said. I said, I felt sorry for the lion. And I, I kind of was mourning for the lion to a certain extent. But then all of a sudden, the lion's head started moving. I said, oh, whoa. I started getting real scared. I said, what's going on? Then the lion's head start connecting back to the body of the, the male lion's head start connecting back to the body. His body connected to his head. And he remember these the body parts as I was saying, I got I, I was I began to be scared and I ran. I felt like he was chasing me. I don't know if he was chasing me or not, but I felt like he was chasing me. It looked like he was about to start chasing me. So I got scared and ran. And then it kind of brought me to like another part of the dream. But it was in the same place. But the I was, I was basically trying to contain. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. When the male lion came, I missed the point. When the male lion jumped off, then the other, some of the other lions body started coming off like and it was two in the next part of the vision it was two it was two female lions and it was the male lion but the, in the second part of the vision the male lion i couldn't find him anymore i was like dang what a, what a male because i was trying to contain the lions i was trying to keep them in one part of the house i was like oh we got to keep these lions in this room and so it was two female lions all right which i believe to be the northern and southern kingdom all right. All right. The virgins of of the son of God. All right. It was two female lions. And I was like, OK, let's try to. And I wasn't really that scared of the female lions as much as I was scared of the male lion. Like the male lion, which I believe was a representation of Yahweh Shai. I was I was really scared of him. But the female lions I was like, OK, I was still kind of scared. But I was like, yo, these are some lions. <laughs> So, you know, I was like, yo, wait, hold up now. These are lions. So I wasn't, it wasn't peaches and cream, if that makes sense. But um, I, it was more so just a containment thing. Like, okay, they, I'm containing them. We're good. Let me keep them on this side of the house. Can't have them run all over the place. I don't want them. You know, let's keep them over here. All right. And um, they came, they came off the wall. All right, which is almost wow. It's almost like a crucifixion. When I think about it, how he, how the male lion because he was he was actually cruci. Oh my goodness, he was upright on the wall. Oh goodness sake! And brothers, please, I'm not, this is not no fake deep shit. This is like, this is real. This is through the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, Jake is being honest and, and open. All right. As I was saying, the male lion, which I couldn't see anymore. He, he was not in the house, but the two female lions were there. All right. And to me, that represents Yahweh Shai, all right. Yahweh Shai, for a moment, he um, he's with us, but he wasn't with us. He is not with us right now because he's with the Father, right? Let me get a scripture concerning that. Let's let's get some scriptures. Uh, let me go to the book of. Uh, let me, where is that? Let's go to the book of, one second. This is kind of on the fly. The scriptures that I'm getting, I didn't really plan these out too much. Uh, what is that? It's in the book of Acts. Uh, goodness sake. It's in, what was that? That's ask the why stand ye? Ah, uh, goodness sake. I forgot where that was in the book of Acts. The same, how was Um. Ah. 
Is it at the first check? Let me see here. Is it X? I'm sorry, I can. Well, I might, I might just briefly paraphrase it. Uh, when Yahweh Shai um, went back up to the Father, all right, he uh, on the chariot after his resurrection. Okay, the um, the angel told the disciples, soon to be apostles. He told them. He said, um, that might be in John. Is that in the book of John? I'm sorry, I kind of want to get the scripture. Um, all right, well, it's, it's fine. But you brothers know... Um, what scripture I'm talking about? Where it's where it says, "Why stand ye gates?" And matter of fact, forget it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it with my phone. I'm gonna just um. I guess I'll try to just put this picture as the yeah Acts one and eleven. I knew it was Acts in the Book of Acts, the first chapter. All right, this is Acts chapter one, verse. Uh, we'll start at verse nine, actually. It says, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And this is Yahweh, all right, the lion, the lion of Judah. Verse 10, it says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which these are angels it says which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same yahweh which is taken up from you into heaven which he was taken up with the father shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him to go into heaven. All right? So that's going to bring me to the next part of the dream. Now, I remember, um, to the best of my ability, uh, I remember uh, going to the front door and opening the front door and... I saw out in my carport my my personal father, which I believe he represented Yahweh in the dream. He had the young lion, or he had the male lion, which at this point the the lion that I saw on the wall was an old lion. He was kind of old, older. He was like middle aged lion. I don't know if you know thirties, forties type of lion. You know from a animal age, you know, but the, um, lion that I saw that my father, my father had him on a chain, kind of like a pet, you know, you know, that lion, it was the same male lion, but he didn't have the, um, what do you call the, what is that called? He didn't have the mane. He didn't have the large mane that I saw earlier. But it was a, it was still that male lion, but it was a young lion. It was a lion's whelp, as you would say. All right? Which a lion's whelp is a young lion. All right? And he came back peaceably. When, when I say peaceably, he came back, I, I don't know how to describe it, pure. He came, he came back pure, you know, majestic. When I saw him, I was like, wow, that's a really beautiful. And he will come back peaceably to the, for the elect. But to those who are the non-elect, he will come back with utter destruction. 
All right. So let me go back to Genesis, the 49th chapter. In the ninth verse, it says, Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Right. This is going to the tribe of Judah. All right. You know, because the tribe of Judah is as an old lion. Because they, you know, they, the tribe of Judah take a, a bunch of crap from these nations, which the tribe of Judah is really above all these other nations. They are the superior people of the planet Earth, the so-called Negroes, all right, of America. All right. They're even better. Well, they're even above the other tribes, you know, of the nation of Israel. Now, that's really going into. Um, well, they are. They are better. They have. They're, they're better because the Lord made them more superior than the other tribes. But at the end of the day, we are all one nation. Okay? Don't get it twisted. It's really going into um, the monarchy. But even the monarchy, the, with the, under the new covenant, and even under the grace, we're, we are all kings and priests. All the tribes are kings and priests. Okay? But don't get it twisted. The monarchy... The chief of the monarchy still resides through Judah. That's why it says it's going to continue through the house of David. All right, forever. That's in 2 Samuels. All right. It says of his throne shall be no end. That's talking about the throne of Yahweh. All right. It said, oh, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Right. The Heavenly Father is going to rise the tribe of Judah up, all right, um, through Jacob's trouble. He's going to force the tribe of Judah to be activated. And these, these people, these nations are going to realize how uh, mighty and amazing. Even these Israelites who are not in the truth, they're going to show themselves. You know, the, the Lord is going to put a certain spirit on the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is an amazing tribe, but how much more so for those who are in this truth, in this truth, right? Because those of us who are in this truth are going to receive spiritual powers, all right, divine intervention, so on and so forth, all right? And when we're pushed to the edge and it's like, oh, no, nah, nigga, you can come here and take the Karagma, we're going to be like, nah, fuck that. It said, it said who should rouse them up? I guess you just... It, you, it, those certain men are going to turn into Modinians. And certain men are going to, when you push us against the edge and you start lynching our babies and killing our wives or circumcising the babies, and st well, we, then we turn into Hasmonians. You know, those draconian legisla legislations, they're going to get worse and worse. They're going to be pushing us into a, a corner where we're not going to have any choice but to be Judas Maccabees. We're not going to have any choice but to be Simeon or Sh Shemaiah one or Simon, as some would say. OK, we're not going to have any choice but to be Jonathan. We're not going to have any choice but to be John. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of the Hasmonean. We're not going to have any choice but to be um, Mathathias. You know? I'm speaking of the Hasmonean dynasty who rose up because they were pushed to the limit through, through persecution. Okay? Through persecution. So... Yeah, this is, you know, this, that was pretty much the dream. So, um, you know, I'm not going to make it any much longer than it needs to be. But, uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Giving all praises to you, Shai. Shalom, keep the faith.